Today I'm going to show you a simple technique to create what has become known as double colour exposure, where two images are overlaid to produce an interesting effect with contrasting colours. It's a similar visual style to 3D anaglyph images, or the overprint effect used in old school print designs. The steps to create the basic double colour exposure is very simple, so stick around till the end to also see a few additional tips and tricks to add colour grading effects to finish off the artwork. But first, if you want a shortcut to creating this effect and to support my channel in the process, check out the links in the description to some resources to create double colour exposure effects in Photoshop. You'll find actions and toolkits from as little as $5. So to create the double colour exposure effect, you first need two photographs. Portrait images of the same model but in two different poses are a common style, but you could also experiment with two completely different images. I found all the images I used on Pexels.com. Open up Photoshop and place the two images onto two separate layers. A quick way to do this is to go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. Browse to your files and hit OK, or you could do it the manual way by copying and pasting from one document to another. Double click the top layer to open the Layer Style options. Then turn off and on the three R, G and B checkboxes to toggle between the red, green and blue channels to see the different colour combinations you can achieve. I'm going for a red and cyan effect by unchecking all but the red channel. Use the Command and T shortcut for Transform. The composition looks a little neater with the profile portrait facing the other way, so right click and choose Flip Horizontal. Hit the Enter key when you're done to apply the change. That's essentially the effect complete, but there's a few finishing touches we can add to enhance the result. Add a selective colour adjustment layer from the bottom of the layers panel. Begin by adjusting the cyan, magenta, yellow and black sliders to alter the overall colour of the red layer. Here you can fine tune or totally change the colour scheme. I made the red slightly more pinky. Change the drop down to cyans to target the blue version of the image and adjust the sliders to alter the colour and overall contrast. I gave it a much deeper blue colour and increased the black to help make this layer more prominent. Next add a colour balance adjustment layer and begin moving the sliders back and forth while watching the live preview to add some interesting colour grading to the image. I wanted to give mine a yellowy colour cast so I carefully altered the colours between the mid-tones, shadows and highlights to balance between the warm and cool hues. Shift and click to select all the layers then right click and choose convert to smart object. This will allow us to add one more filter non-destructively so we can edit the settings or remove it entirely if necessary. Go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Go through each slider to adjust and fine tune the final image. I added more yellow in the temperature setting, then helped bring up the darker areas with the shadows adjustment. A touch more vibrance really enhances the colours to finish off this first example. The double colour exposure effect also works really well with images shot against a dark background. These two shots are also freely downloadable from Pexels.com. Load the files onto individual layers using the Load Files into Stack menu. Then double click the top layer and configure the channels to produce the double colour exposure effect. One of these images is slightly smaller than the other, so use the Command and T shortcut to scale it up. Composing this layout so the eyes of the two shots perfectly line up creates a really cool effect. We're left with a blank strip down one side where the image has been repositioned. Usually you can fix this with a content aware fill. Make a selection with the marquee tool, then go to edit and fill. Choose content aware, followed by select and deselect. Add a levels adjustment layer to darken this image, bringing both the shadows and highlights sliders to boost the contrast. Add the selective colour adjustment layer to alter the hues of the two layers. A colour balance adjustment layer can be used to add a little extra colour grading again. Then an alternative technique than converting everything into a smart object is to make a merged copy. Go to Layer and Merge Layers, but hold the Alt key while doing so to merge everything onto a new layer. A series of camera raw adjustments can be applied to this separate layer to fine tune the end result. I added more of a blue colour cast and boosted the highlights and contrast. The Dehaze slider does a good job of eliminating the washed out matte look from the original images to further enhance the colours. If you look closely there's some artefacts in the background of the shot, adding some grain is a good way to disguise this. 
Under the effects section, increase the grain slider to around 20 to 30. Adding a vignette while you're there is also an easy way to draw attention to the center of the image. Toggling off this camera raw layer just shows the difference a few extra finishing touches can make. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.